Hey guys, welcome to this new tutorial that I promised you before. I talked about this tutorial a few weeks ago. I think the past two weeks since I finished my brick tutorial, which is on Gumroad now. Anyway, so we start with the initial shapes, then the detailing phase. After that, we go directly to the micro details and the base color and the height map. To achieve this kind of wrinkles and a cloth material, which is very easy, we are going to see now how did I achieve all this. So first of all, I started using the diamond shape, which is a square scaled down a bit and rotated 45 degrees. Then I try to build the edges, so you can use this technique use the edge detect here like you see and add some roundness after that blend it using multiply mode with the previous one to get this kind of beveled and round edges so scaled it down just a little bit like that using the transformation 2d and I change the styling mode to no tiling, like you see here. It was H and V tiling, which is horizontal and vertical tiling, which will cause problems, especially in the splatter. So get rid of it and change it to no tiling. Change this first to absolute and then change the tiling mode to no tiling. Okay. So using the splatter, you can see the parameters here. Play around to get some random look here. The goal is to get something similar to this, like some organized wrinkles. So I use the splatter and I blended the same first one with some warps, like you see here. Blended them together and I inverted them to get some more height variation like this so blur them just a little and plug them to the high pass grayscale with a large radius like you see here look at the result how it changes so warp it again using the crystals too just a small amount of blurring 10 is really small for that okay after that i used the shape scaled it down just a little and i blurred it just like this like you see here because when we use this in the tile sampler it will cause such problems like seams and all that stuff so that's why i try to get rid of them this is our shape which is the main shape so okay tile sampler okay change the pattern input so this is what we have got so let's just play around with the tile and settings make sure you are using the Blending mode to max, not add and subtract. In the pattern, you can change this to rotation random and symmetry random to get more variations. The more variations we make, the better it looks. So let's change the size random like this and then scale it up like this and use the scale random like you see here and change the position random like this don't worry about it if it's looking creepy and the rotation random mask random too use just a few parameters of each random value like you see here 
let's scale it more like this okay so let's compare so this is how it looks it's too creepy like you see here it's looking like worms or something But the detailing phase will fix that. So I use the directional blur to get that stretching look, like it's being stretched from the both sides, from the left and from the right, or any direction we want, depending on the angle that we use. So after that we need to morph the the height map using the normal from the previous detail. Increase the value to about 15 or 20 or whatever. And plug it in the vector morph grayscale with a small amount like this. Let's see how that works. After that, use only the vector morph grayscale without a vector field. So the vector field at this point, it is black. Like you see here. So it's like smudge effect in Photoshop. So don't worry about it. We will fix that. So add another directional warp and using the crystal node and warp it again like this and here comes the magic use the non-uniform directional warp using a parallel noise like this So you can change the trail mode to max or min to get some different look. Max and min. So I like the max one. So it's still looking creepy and solid. We need to blur it more one more time. Okay, like this. So we are losing some details just to bring them back. We need the normal and the curvature smooth to get more details like this. And here is our cloth material. So let's change the tiler. You can play around with these settings here. So adjusting the X size, we determine the direction of the cloth props like this. So you can change this one to about two or three. So the direction of the cloth wrinkles should be followed by the angle of the directional blur like this. This is how it looks using the non-uniform directional warp. It's looking too much stylized and solid. So the blurring will help us get rid of that look and the curvature is smooth it is very helpful it helps bring in some of the details like this so you can't use the curvature smooth without the normal map so now let's go to the micro details so I use the wave 2 with a small amount of disorder and I duplicated it 
and rotated it the 45 degrees and I blended them together like this and I used the safe transform tiled it two times and a small amount of blur and I warped them using this height information like this and I blended them together so you can see here use it as normal And this is how it looks. If I change the trail mode to min, it's looking like waves or some different kind of clothes. Look at the average mode. So I prefer the max one, depending on the angle too. The angle may change the shape. So let's test the color and roughness. So we added some wetness to the Clothes material like this using just a grunge map and a clamp to set the limits of the two rough areas and the two glossy ones just to create a range and I blurred it just a little like this so the wet areas should be the darker like this using the add sub so darker values are the glossiest ones like this it's like in real life so you can just play around with the random seed to create your own variation or the one that you like so you can create alphas for ZBrush or for sculpting in any program or any software and this is the end of our tutorial. I hope you like it guys and I hope you find it useful. Stay tuned for more tutorials. I will be posting some paid and free tutorials together. Not just Substance Designer but also I will show some tutorials on Maya. Maybe Marvelous Designer, Photoshop and how to use them in your workflow. And Real Engine 2, Speed Tree. I will be focusing on more tutorials in the future. When I have time of course and stay tuned for more stuff and have a great day guys thanks for watching